everybody, and welcome to What the Fuck Fridays here at Indie Film Cafe. And boy, have we just watched a weird What the Fuck movie. It is Peter Jackson's classic, classic, weird puppet film, Meet the Feebles. Miss Lenore, <laughs> I know you haven't seen this film before. Did you even hear of it before? Actually, I might have seen it before. Really? Do you remember when I told you I was scared of puppets? I do remember, yes. I thought it was Dark Crystal that I watched. It might have been this. <laughs> well, you could very well be right. Wow, what a crazy, crazy, weird movie. So what did you think? I mean, I don't know if there's necessarily anything to be afraid of, but my goodness. What's your reaction? Oops. Were you bored by it? No, oh, it's just late at night. I understand. So, the first thing that pops into my head is, how was this theater not closed down years before this? <laughs> yeah, the... F um, do you think you can encapsulate one final time what's going on in this film? This film is everything that leads up to this theater being closed down. <laughs> So, uh, I don't even know all the characters' names. Well, there's Robert. He's the hedgehog. Starts off with him. He is the new guy there. He has kind of a small role that I never really worked out what it was. He joins the chorus, so he's kind of like the backing group. Yeah. Little parts. And he only has small roles. But he's really excited to be there, and he's extremely over-enthusiastic about everything. He's also really gullible. And adorable. And that too. And he's a hedgehog. Yeah. And before we go any further, which we should probably clarify, everybody in this film is some kind of puppet animal. There are no humans at all. It's like the entire world, just like our world, only a lot more gross and disgusting and violent, and everybody is a puppet. Yeah, there's only a few characters you really need to care about in this movie. <laughs> Heidi, who is the, like, the opera singer. She's the star of the Feebles uh, variety show. There is Arthur the Worm. He's a stage manager. Um, Sebastian, the director. He's a fox. Who was the elephant character? Oh, gosh, I forget his name. Um... I know his son is Seymour, because he's like half elephant, half chicken. He's kind of grotesque. <laughs> um, Lucille, who is Robert's girlfriend, her right. fiance. She's also a new chorus member, and um, she's some kind of a poodle, I think. She's like a poofy dog. I thought she was a duck. No, no, the doctor was a duck. Okay. Let's see. That was Dr. Quacks. Um, and let's not forget Bletch. Bletch is the walrus. He's oh. the, uh, he's kind of like the producer in the big shot of the whole film. Um, I was only listing the characters that survived. Oh, okay. Well, I was just going into some of the other ones because he kind of represents the group that are not nice and who don't survive. Um, then there's Trevor, who's a rat, who's kind of a filthy, disgusting, gross character. There's a lot of filthy, disgusting, gross characters. Um, there's, an, a, there's a fly whom I don't remember his, na his, his name, but he's like a muckraker, and he follows people into the toilets, literally, and uh, just to try to get whatever stories he can, and likes to dine on whatever happens to be in the toilet, which is always wonderful. Uh, and then there's Harry the Bunny, who I guess is kind of the ringleader. And, um, you know, he, uh, I guess he was the, the sort of the star. And the show's kind of built around him. And, but he's been a very bad bunny. And uh, he got himself, at least he thinks he gets himself sick. Uh, but it turns out not to be so. And then there's this, this, this whole other slew. There's the m amazing amount of strange characters. And, st and they're all puppets in this very weird world that Peter Jackson has put together. Now, for those of you who, who recall his name, Peter Jackson is the director from New Zealand who did all of the Lord of the Rings films. And he did 
things like Heavenly Creatures and a whole bunch of other um, big time Hollywood films and he's known for being one of those people who can create entire worlds. And in fact, he has his whole studio set up in New Zealand, which is one of the reasons why he got um, Lord of the Rings. And as a matter of fact, his early, his three earliest films are all wackadoodle, crazy, insane, batshit crazy films. First one is um, Bad Taste, and then there is uh, Meet the Feebles, and then there is Dead Alive, which I almost showed you because Dead Alive is just as good, if not better. Um, but this one, of course, has the extra disturbing, crazy st thing going on in that, that it's all puppets. And I know you, how much you love puppets, so I had to let you at least have a little puppet fun in there. Um, so on the strength of creating these worlds, even though there are wild uh, films, Peter Jackson was able to demonstrate that he could he could create, you know, an entire world um, in his own studio. And that's one of the reasons why he was chosen to do the Lord of the Rings trilogy, because he could do that, and he did completely do that. So this is one of his little worlds or, that he creates, and it looks just like our world. I mean, you look at the streets, you look at the buildings, you look at the vehicles and the boats and everything, golf courses, Everything is just how it normally is in our world, with the exception that there are no human beings whatsoever. Everybody is some kind of weird puppet. Even the Jesus on the cross was some kind of a frog thing. It was so I it was weird. Kermit. I don't think it's Kermit. That would have been uh, some kind of you know intellectual property theft. It looked a lot like Kermit. Well, you know, you see one frog, I suppose you see them all. Um, and that was another character, by the way. There was a there was a frog who just likes to throw knives. Who has been in, to Vietnam, and he was a junkie, and he gets killed by his own knife. And I there's think he made that up for money. He, well, yeah, I I think he may have actually done it. That's where he got hooked on. But just a a wide wide range of crazy scary characters. So sorry, okay. back to your encapsulation. So only a few characters actually survived this movie. Very few. <laughs> so there's Arthur the stagehand. What is his He's the stage manager. Sebastian the director. Heidi herself. The elephant man and his son Seymour. And then Robert and Lucille. Robert. And it has like little things at the end saying what becomes of them. Everybody else dies. And they deserve it. And how do they die? Largely because Heidi snaps and shoots everyone, including the audience. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Miss Heidi. Tell me about her. Who is she and what does she do? She is the opera singer mm -hmm. of the group. She is the main star. And she starts this when she's 16 and she gets severely depressed throughout the course of her career. In part, I think, because she was 16 when she started and the walrus character... Fletch. Fletch. Very, very obviously is using her. Oh, and yeah. this starts when she's 16. He's definitely using her coattails to ro rocket to fame. So he puts her in this show, and she sings and does all the stuff. But she's also been emotionally manipulated by Bletch. Uh, and she thinks that he loves her when, in fact, he doesn't. And she ends up catching him, uh, banging some uh, female cat <laughs> of some kind. She was a cat. She was a cat. She was a Siamese cat. Oh. Yeah. Some of some of the the creatures were a little difficult to figure out. Um, like the elephant man had was training these little puffs. I don't know what they were. I think they were canaries. No, no, they were like little. They were like little wound puffs. I don't know what they were. They I don't know what they were either, but. They peed everywhere, they pooed everywhere, they were like completely not house trained. Um, but then they ended up getting squished by a barrel, so the rat started to eat them and said it was a nice meat patty. But <laughs> I digress, so Miss Heidi uh, is going through all of this emotional stuff. She, um, she likes to eat sweets. So when her, when her stress is high, she runs down to the bakery and starts shoving entire cakes and chocolates and pies and everything you can possibly think of 
you know, I mean, by the armfuls. Hippos are large creatures, even as a puppet, so she's able to, like, consume vast quantities. She was a hippo? She was a hippo. Oh. <laughs> I thought she was... She wasn't the cow. There was another cow. That was Daisy. They I were thought, They I were thought... the ones doing the porn scene. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, there are porn scenes in this. There's a whole lot that. of weird stuff going on in this film. Um, Heidi was a pig. Nope, nope, Heidi was a hippo. So she, um, towards the end, he's decided, Bletch has decided that he's had enough of her, and he's getting rid of her, and he fires her, and um, she snaps. She tries to kill herself, but she can't, and she ends up getting a machine gun and just goes amok and just Which really begs the question, why does this show have so many weapons backstage? <laughs> well, weapons that well that's, that's part of the other thing, too, is that Trevor and Bletch are involved in all kinds of drugs, uh, some of which they use to keep their talent under control and they're just making money otherwise. Because they're shady characters. They're also doing porn. They're also doing all kinds of crap behind the scenes. Yeah, so drugging the, and raping them. Yeah, the idea is that, you know, whatever, even a family show might look wholesome on the front, but there's all kinds of devious stuff going on behind the scenes. It definitely didn't look wholesome by the end of this movie. No. And, yeah, so that's kind of what gets exposed at the end, and Heidi goes on a rampage with her machine gun and wipes out everyone. <laughs> Including the audience. Including the audience. Um, but there's some interesting songs that are done in there. Uh, I liked Garden of Love. That was kind of cute. Uh, the first time I tried it, tried it as a disaster, and all the sets fall apart on them. It was funny. Um... The Sodomy song is probably also notorious. That's one of the Fox's songs. Yeah. <laughs> I um, wish that song was shorter. Yeah, I know. I say that about all songs and movies. But um, there's a lot of really crazy, disgusting, over-the-top stuff. The poo scene with the uh, fly was pretty awful. Uh... Harry's disease, which kind of encroaches more and more on him, looks disgusting. Um, there's a lot of toilet humor in this film. Lots of, uh, <laughs> lots of uh, you know, liquids, uh, internal bodily fluids flying around here and there. Um, yeah, it's, uh, Peter Jackson's not pulling any punches. He lets it all go. It's, uh... <laughs> So there's, yeah. there's a pretty high gross-out factor, wouldn't you say? Basically, picture every shocking scene you've seen from any music biopic ever, and it's in this movie. As puppets. As puppets. As animal puppets. <laughs> yes, there's, there's like weird animal porn or puppet porn. There's, there's weird animal puppet sex going on. And, God, there's even one horrific little elephant, or no, it was an anteater. Because he's got the long nose, who uh, likes to sniff panties from the laundry. I thought he was an elephant. No, no, he was an anteater. Uh, the other guy was the elephant. I thought there were two of them. Mm -mm. No, all, that's, that's the other thing, is that there's this huge variety of characters in this film, and they all have their own individual animal puppets. And you got to admit, the puppets are pretty amazing. I mean, for, for a show that's, that's incredibly you know, grotesque as this, the puppets in this is just, I don't know, it's hard to say. You have to see it to believe it. The puppets are well designed. They really, really are. And the people who animate them or who are the characters for them, I mean, you can't help but getting swept up in the story. It's not like it's a crappy story or a bad film. It's actually cool. It's actually fun. You had to be rooting for Wobbert, weren't you? Yeah, there's this one really great scene where Wobbert has fallen in love with Lucille, and so he can't figure out how he can woo her, so he goes to Arthur. And Arthur, I guess, tells him that she loves flamenco uh, guitar. So he gets all dressed up in this Spanish suit with a guitar, and he sings his little song. And um, she comes out, and, you know, it's, it's what sort of makes her fall for him. And it's pretty damn adorable, if you ask me. Yeah, Arthur and Ro Robert, their interactions were really cute. Right. And Lucille. Right, right. So Except for the scene where uh, drugs and... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. that part wasn't so fun. But there are plenty of characters that you can root for, which is kind of nice. It's, it's really kind of a melodrama. Like, you know, 
this is the sort of, you know, shady things that happen behind the show. And it's like watching a train crash. <laughs> very much. Only again, with puppets. With weird, disgusting, crazy, bizarre puppets. Um, lots of singing, lots of dancing, lots of music, lots of craziness, lots of toilet humor, lots of grotesque, disgusting things. Nuts. You, you can't tell me you've ever seen a film quite like this. I have not. <laughs> you mentioned Dark Crystal, and Dark Crystal does have puppets, but it's not the same. You I mean, they may have had puppets, but this is like Dark Crystal on crack and speed at the same time, with music. You know? So, yeah. It's, uh, it may not be for everybody's taste, and I know initially <laughs> you're kind of looking at it in horror, but weren't there parts of the film that you kind of thought were cool? I liked the ending. Yeah, I liked the ending, of course. But just like some of the singing was neat, I liked some of the little stories and some of the character interaction. The hedgehog was cute. Admit the hedgehog. Yeah, I liked him singing. He yeah. Was cute. So there was definitely a nice mixed bag of stuff going on. But otherwise, this is just out there as far as the film goes. And like I said, Peter Jackson is really, really good at creating entire universes in you know, his films. And they're all consistent, and they're, they're really, really good, and very creative and imaginative. Um, so you can understand why he would have been trusted with Lord of the Rings, because he did such a fabulous job with that. And you look at this, and you can say, oh, okay, I get it. Not that this has anything to do with the Lord of the Rings or how it was done, but the fact is, it's the same thing. It's world building, and he can do that. He's one of the few directors who can do that convincingly, and he did it all in, in, in New Zealand, all in his own studio. So it was a lot less expensive for them to say, here, take this entire project because we know you can do this all on your own in New Zealand. And that's what he was able to do. And a movie like Meet the Feebles is exactly like, you know, well, not exactly like it, but it's the same kind of world building that went into Lord of the Rings. It just was a very, very different story than anything J.R.R. Tolkien ever, ever thought of. <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun, and it is definitely what the fuck, because most people I have shown this film to are like, where the hell did that come from? Um, they've either never heard of this film, or they have heard the reputation that this film has as being a complete wackadoodle film, um, which I'm sure you can agree with. <laughs> So here's my question. I'm sure you probably have no interest in seeing it again, but would you recommend it to anyone? No? <laughs> well, how does it rank on some of the other crazier films that you've seen so far since your uh, apprenticeship here in Indie Film Cafe? Like in terms of filmography or in terms of content? Either one. Filmography, it gets a one. Content, it gets a 10. Oh, so if you're going back to our stinkometer, 1 being very, very good and 10 being terrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's well shot and it's well written. The characters are sh shockingly consistent. Absolutely. The production values are amazing. I just am really uncomfortable with the content. <laughs> sure. There are horrible, horrible characters in this thing. And they do horrible, horrible things. Um, and that's, that's kind of part of the fun for me. Um, <laughs> and seeing you squirm a little bit was kind of part of the fun, too. But Yeah, I should mention, I'm scared of puppets. Aw, you couldn't be scared of these puppets, though. There's nothing to be afraid of. I mean, they were gross. I could understand being offended by them, perhaps. But afraid? Eh, there's no horror elements in this. There's really nothing to be afraid of. More things to being uh, being disgusted by. Multiple characters get dismembered in this movie. Well, remember they're puppets, so it's just stuffing. Yeah, <laughs> if this were live action, I'm not even sure this would get an R rating. Well, that's just it, and that's why I chose this over Dead Alive because Dead Alive there is an equally uh, huge uh, grotesque slaughter, uh, but that's people. And it's blood, and it's, I mean, there's gallons and gallons, and it's be, it really becomes a live-action cartoon, because it's so much of it, so over the top. This one's over top in a very, very different way, but 
in the end, it's they're puppets. You know, so when they're getting dismembered, it's stuffing coming out of them. Now, of course, there are other bodily fluids, too, that they're having fun with and other grotesque, disgusting things. But that's just part of the humor that, you know, some people are going to like and some people aren't. I understand. It's not, it's not for everybody's taste. The movie itself may not be a garden of love. It's more like a garden of what the fuck. <laughs> and then at the ending, they have, like, little ending cards for the surviving characters. And the elephant character ends up becoming a horticulturist where he raises his son. Um, Arthur, it looks like he gets a knighthood. Yep. While Sebastian, the director, writes a tell-all book and apparently makes a lot of money off of it. There's always one. Lucille and Robert get married. And Robert goes on to become a fashion photographer. <laughs> and Heidi goes to prison. Gets out in ten years, which feels very light for multiple violent murders. Yeah, well... Maybe she gets she her snapped. sentence commuted a bit for mental illness. Or, right. Or extenuating circumstances, that is, the entire movie. But then she gets rehabilitated and ends up working as a grocer. And a, with a new identity. With a new identity. Well, and she seems much happier. And hopefully she's staying away from chocolate. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There she was looked just healthier in the last scene, too. Gobs and gobs of chocolate and cake and pies and just gobble, oh, no, gobble, no. gobble. Yeah, I like chocolate and cake, but I like tasting them. <laughs> I wouldn't be eating them that quickly. That was amazing. Uh, so, okay, I, I am going to say this is this film is not necessarily for everyone's taste, but if you're looking for a crazy wackadoodle film that's extremely imaginative, that is totally out there, that your friends have never heard of or seen before, and you want to show them something neat and crazy and fun and ridiculous, this is kind of the film for you if you can find it. And again. Peter Jackson, he's like a major, major Hollywood, well, not necessarily Hollywood, but he's a he's a kind of a big studio director now. Everybody knows who he is, and it's fascinating to see a lot of the earlier independent films that he made. They're just they're just really really cool. I, I recommend all three: Bad Taste, Dead Alive, and Meet the Feebles. They're all very very different, but just to get a, a really good you know taste of how he can take these stories and then create entire worlds around them um, that you believe is just, you know, it's just amazing. It really, really is good. And seeing him from an early age to what he ends up doing now, it's pretty impressive. I mean, you saw The Lord of the Rings, right? You know? Yeah. So you can kind of understand the same sort of sense of world building that he did in that film with this film. You know, the way he makes all the sets and everything is believable, all the shots, just the action. Because there are definitely actors in some kind of suits as well sometimes, kind of mixed in with the puppets. Uh, because you actually see them running. I mean, Heidi's running at one point, you know. And that yeah. can't be a puppet. There's, there's, a, there's a suit on a human, and she's filming them doing that. But the way it's shot is that it completely and believably fits in to this unnamed weird animal puppet world that Peter Jackson has created to tell his story. And let's be honest, I'm not sure this this movie, even with the bloodbath, would necessarily be that interesting if it were human beings, if they were regular actors doing That's this. That's true, yeah. The thing is, is that this is, this is a puppet film. And the fact that everybody is a crazy, weird puppet animal is really what sells it, is really what makes this stand out and different from everything else. Something just occurred to me. Uh huh. They said it was a family show on stage. The Meet the Feebles variety hour, yes. It occurred to me. Because it keeps reminding me of Sesame Street. Right, like on acid or crack or something. Like, this is the movie that's behind the scenes of Sesame Street. <laughs> Gosh, let's hope not. Too many drugs and murder and pornography going on for that. I never liked Sesame Street. Aww. Like I said, I'm scared of puppets. Well, 
I don't know if this necessarily cured your fear of puppets, but uh, I can understand you not really kind of wanting to be around them. But stuffies are cool, right? Yeah. Yay! We like the stuffies. Also on the list of things I don't like is, well, Sesame Street, Elmo, and the Muppets. I'm right there with you, trust me. Oh wait, no, this would actually would be behind the scenes of the Muppets, not Sesame Street, would it? <laughs> Probably. Sorry, I get them mixed up. It's okay. So this is actually our final performance here for Miss Lenore, who is going back to North Carolina to finish her degree. So I wanted to thank you for hanging out and for putting up with horrible, disgusting, terrible films that I know you did just to make me happy, and I really appreciate it. Um, but it's nice having somebody else to sort of talk about some of these films with. And um, I was kind of saving this one towards the end so that you wouldn't be too frightened. <laughs> but it's been fun sharing them with you, and um, hopefully we'll get you back at some point. Yeah. So I think that's about it for this episode, guys. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a good time. If you get the chance, if you can find Meet the Feebles on DVD or, God forbid, Blu-ray, I don't know if it's on Blu-ray at this point. Uh, it's a lot of Peter Jackson's early works not really been um, been re-released that way. It's possible you could look on Amazon, but I, I don't believe any of it is quite yet. But it should be, and this is definitely one of the ones. If you're looking for something unusual and interesting and something new that you hadn't seen before, maybe you don't want to show this to everybody, but I guarantee you you will definitely say, okay, this was What the Fuck, and that's what What the Fuck Fridays is all about. So thank you for joining us again, and we will see you next time here at Indie Film Cafe for What the Fuck Fridays. Bye.